Hello, my channel mammals. It is so great to see you here. Welcome aboard, Yankee. But guess what? We're going somewhere else right now. We're going upstate. We're going up to recollect and realize the birthplace of Mackenzie Childs. So many people have asked us, could you please show us some indications, some little signs along the way that occurred to you um, as this movement developed for all of us and for you yourselves. So I thought, let's try this. Let's go up and take a look closely at the details of, of the actual dwelling that uh, we occupied at that time and, and see what it tells us. And um, so we asked our friends, um, that actually live and own the house now. And the house has, of course, evolved and grown with their family, just as it did with ours, but with more layers and more expression of, um, of their experience in the house. So it's been kind of going through, uh, traveling along with, with the world as we all go forward and uh, see each other coming and going. <laughs> so we're so grateful, so deeply grateful to our friends for letting us actually come bursting into their house and taking pictures of little tiny elements and broad sweeping um, expressions and, and sit down and tell a story that happens that can only, only happen when you're right there. You know, there's something about being there that just brings across the most beautiful le recollections of growth in thought along the way. And you can, you can sort of think, oh, I remember when I first thought that. <laughs> That one step in that one room or that one turn of a head or one other person that you just happen to, uh, you know, collide with at that one moment. It's so thrilling to just have that time to be grateful. And that's what we're doing right now. So we're taking you along with us on this journey of about five videos. And I hope you love it. I hope you'll share it with your friends. I hope you'll ask them to subscribe so they can also follow along with us. And just enjoy the ride, enjoy the journey, and um, gosh, it, it's really, it's a very special moment. So let's have fun together with it. We'll see you soon, right there. It was dark and musty here, but Heather was clear, just like any child. white house, just the square central part, no gabled windows, no cupola, no um, little uh, vestibule here, just a plain door, not even um, a paned door like this, and the brick steps going into nowhere. And so imagine just this little square house out in the middle of a prairie with nothing. Well, somehow she just called to us for need. And so I'll show you a little story. adoration anywhere. Um, just a plank stairs with no varnish, no paint, no wallpaper. Well, there was wallpaper, but it was very old. <laughs> and it wasn't especially special at this point. So Richard and um, Heather and I just kind of crept around in the dark. And the reason I say dark is that all the windows were boarded up. There was no light coming through except 
through the slats of the boards, <laughs> of the clapboards on the outside because it was so um, far gone from the weathering that you could actually see through the clapboards, but you couldn't see through the windows because they were boarded up. So imagine us just kind of holding each other's hands, trying to find our way in the dark here. This, this, this um, stair railing was, was here. This is what everything was like, just very, very plain. And long after we were settled down, I told the story, a little tiny bit of story, in my kind of funny way of writing that's neither prose nor poetry. <laughs> and we can follow the words, and I can explain what it was like. So we painted this floor, and I wrote this on the floor. It was dark and musty here, but Heather was clear, just like any child, right? She dropped my hand then and walked toward a peak of light in the bedroom, which showed her a sprawling spider's web, <laughs> all laden with flies tied up for dinner. You know how big, huge, old spider webs are full of little sacks of flies that the spider had saved for dinner. Her view stretched to hold the whole dusty web, and she said with a reverent whisper, Look, Mummy, lace. So she saw, instead of a spider's web, which to grown-ups means a lack of care and a sort of destitute left to the spiders and the bugs and the, um, the, just the, the ruin of the weather. But Heather saw the spider's web as lace, which m right in that moment changed my vision of this house. It was quite amazing how that worked, how that child worked. Then, Richard opened a broken window and passed through a bundle of weeds he pulled. And it was so cute because there were no flowers, but only beautiful weeds. And Paul, as in the Apostle Paul in the Bible, asked, do ye look on things after the outward appearance? And I answered, thank you for the beautiful bouquet. So that's what we learned when we first stepped into this old house. And you know what was amazing? This experience of making home out of this really is what fortified us for making home for a whole world of people in the ways that our hands just worked through, became more courageous, more clear, more capable. And by the time we started making things for home, we understood home so deeply that it seemed to have shown through the works that we made out into the world and it opened up people's hearts to home in ways we never realized until we started seeing the results in thought shared all over the world. Let me just say that this pottery that I showed you, it, it, it's all broken, right? Well, <laughs> here's why. It's because we finally made our studio after it grew and grew from this house on to another old cellar in the village and then into an old dormitory in the village. It moved to an old farm that had been taken over by the banks by then. And, and while, where we worked there, it was really a great place for us to work. But we didn't realize that the wiring in the old barn had been chewed away gently through the years by little vermin of some sort. 
and one night there was a raging fire. Richard and I happened to have been there at the, at the time, and we just, again, we just started hauling buckets from the pond, trying to put it out, called for help. It became the most alarm fire of any fire for many, many years in this region. People came from everywhere to help. And there, um, through all of that work of fighting the flames um, and trying to contain the fire, many of our beautiful works were smashed through the, the, the bla blasts of the water and the, um, and the dragging through of equipment and firemen trying so desperately to find their way in the dark. And so when all these things broke, both the glazed things and the things in preparation for glaze, I just couldn't throw them away because I saw in them hints of wholeness. And I thought, you know, we need to preserve and, and, and appreciate these beautiful shadows and shapes. And it's been one of my favorite things to look at. And I don't have sad memories when I look at it. I have radiant memories because it's showing how we just kept taking everything that seemed broken, that seemed only a spider's web, and turned it into lace. It turned it into something that was elegant and beautiful and cherished as a prize. Because each one of these things were made by hand. And so, of course, we treasured every hand movement and it never went away. So with that, I'll say, let's have a good day <laughs> and we'll be off on our way and uh, we'll meet again and continue through this wonderful discovery of the evolution of ideas. Okay, so on. <laughs> See you soon. <laughs>